next item is under is number 18. It is C8-17-257, Ponca Tribe of Nebraska and Cross Anderson request approval of a large project special use permit in a GI district. Location is 5701 South 85th Circle, 5639, 5723, 5805, 5810, and 5820 South 86th Circle. We'll hear now from the applicant. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Brent Beller on behalf of the project applicant, Ponca Tribe of Nebraska, along with Krause Anderson, the development team out of Minneapolis, Minnesota. Um, with me today is Chairman Larry Wright of the Ponca Tribe of Nebraska and Larry Bogle, Director of Health Services for the tribe, uh, along with uh, Doug Jandros and Jack Appert from the development team, Krause Anderson, and the project engineer, uh, Trish C. Um, before you today is a large project special use permit in conjunction with the, uh, the Ponca Tribe's acquisition and redevelopment of a, pro of a site down near Ralston, but not in the city of Ralston. So the site specifics are uh, a little bit unique, only in the sense that to the east of us is the city of Ralston, to the west of us is the city of Ralston, but a little sliver here in the city of Omaha. The site itself is, is seven parcels, formerly the Info USA group uh, headquarters. Um, it's about 11.23 acres. The building sizes, there's actually three existing buildings on the property, uh, 156,000 square foot building here, uh, an executive office is about, about 25,000 square feet, and then a more of an industrial building down here on the eastern part, about 8,000 square feet. Um, the Ponca tribe is proposing to relocate their existing facilities uh, down off of 26th and J to this to this site. Um, in conjunction with that 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 move and this redevelopment, uh, they're proposing a number of uses. Number one, a health clinic, medical services, uh, which would require a special use permit. In addition to that, we have executive offices, um, tribal offices, tribal court, which would require conditional uses. I should, we're in a GI district, so those are all conditional uses. But if, I won't get into sp specifics. I'll let Chairman Wright uh, talk about that a bit more once I sit down. Um, but in terms of what they're proposing to do, so existing buildings will all remain. Um, I actually should touch on the site itself. So to the there's, there's one lot uh, next door is an industrial use, uh, a cabinet manufacturer and installer. Uh, to the to the west is also a uh, car repair, uh, storage facilities. Uh, the city of Ralston School District has a number of the buildings, and then going down 85th Circle, again, a number of industrial, light industrial manufacturing type uses. Um, the site plan itself is, again, no new major modifications to the existing buildings. Uh, the tribe is proposing to uh, house a lot of their medical and health services within the, the larger building, the 156,000 square feet building. The only modification of this building is it's built in a drive-through canopy so that as folks who come and, and seek services there can drive, much like a hotel lobby, uh, they can get out of their cars, out of the elements. Um, executive offices will be housed in the, in the same building. And then down on the, the eastern portion, is a transportation building. So I'll let Chairman Wright speak to the transportation facilities and what they offer here within the city of Omaha, but effectively it's going to be a building that cars come in and out of, um, moving people in and out of, of the clinic. Um, as part of this, oh, and I should also mention, so on the western portion uh, is what they are calling a cultural services area. So as part of this, they're proposing a uh, permanent building, 3,500 square foot facility. This is not its permanent location. There's talks of maybe moving it over to the western portion, but essentially this area will be what's called a, cons uh, um, a cultural service area. Um, the idea is this building will house locker rooms for men and women, a kitchenette, those types of uses uh, that will support some of the outdoor activities that the tribe undertakes um, at various times throughout the year. Um, in addition to that, you're going to see extensive redevelopment of landscaping in and around the site. Uh, a proposal of 70 trees throughout, new landscaping throughout. Um, you'll notice the the good amount of landscaping is going to be along 86th Circle. 
in addition, because this is a cultural service area on this side, the tribe's intent is to have as much privacy and, and use landscaping to create that privacy. So uh, number one, it gives them the privacy that they want, but number two, they're trying to be sensitive to the user and the owner to the, the immediate ease to make sure that there's no disruption in their business and operations. Um, in addition to that, a lot of new connectivity at the site. Currently, there's no sidewalk, so obviously we're gonna comply with all the city's requirements for a pedestrian access. A good amount of sidewalks being installed along South 86th, uh, down to this parcel over here. In addition, connecting the sites that are to the east. Um, there's a pretty steep grade between where this building sits currently and the folks that are down to the east. So um, we're proposing to have a connecting drive that will allow folks who come down South 85th Circle to come up through the site, drive through up to the clinic, if so be, um, and uh, again, using that transportation service hub as a, uh, as a sort of moving of people. It's a pretty big investment for the tribe, 25 to 30, $30 million is, is what they're trying to invest in this property. Um, and with that, uh, we appreciate the planning department's recommendations subject to conditions. Obviously, we'll comply with those. And um, I'll sit down and Chairman Wright, if you maybe want to take the floor and speak to the additional uses. Thank you, Commissioner, for, for this time. Uh, my name is Larry Wright, Jr. I'm the Chairman of the Ponca Tribe of Nebraska. And this is uh, Can I get a, your address, please. I'm sorry, 2602 J Street. Uh, this has been a long project for the tribe, and this has made uh, uh, doable for us with the, in conjunction with the Indian Health Service. Uh, we want a competitive grant that goes out across the country. A uh, few tribes are selected for that. It's based on uh, very stringent requirements on their part. And this is a partnership with us, with Indian Health Services, that will last uh, about 20 years. And there's going to be significant investment in the property itself, obviously, but also uh, as soon as we move to this facility, uh, our current clinic space and our current facility of a total of 22,000 square feet, our clinic operates 12,000 of that. This new facility in this main building, 65 to 70,000 square feet will be uh, identified as clinic space. And when we open that, that'll mean 20 new jobs that are created here in the Omaha area. Uh, our tribal citizens in this, in Douglas, Sarpy County, Pottawatomie County, we're just a little over 600 uh, people all together. Uh, the native community in the metro area as a whole is roughly about 15,000 and we know from tracking in our facility we see about 8,000 currently in some form or fashion. Uh, of those there's 150 different tribes that have been identified that come through our facility. When we open this facility we plan on expanding that to not only natives but also the population in general specifically uh, our own employees who we provide health care to, but also the community as a whole. And um, this, uh, we outgrew our current facility about 10 years ago. And so this obviously allows for a lot of growth, future growth for the tribe. And, and we're, we're, we're very happy for that, to be able to have a facility to grow into and be a state of an art facility as well. We have good partnerships in the community with Creighton University, University of Nebraska Medical Center. We look for more partnerships with that. We have uh, interest from a tribal college that wants to hold classes on our site, and we look for those positive relationships as much as we can. We think that uh, our track record is such in our current location uh, for the 20 years that we've been there, uh, that we've been a good neighbor, helped improve the, the area, and we don't see that change in here. And obviously, this is a significant investment for the tribe, and we're very fortunate to be in this position and uh, it's something that uh, our people are very excited about. We know the community that uses our facilities is very excited about this possibility as well. And uh, as the same with other properties that we have in our, in our uh, tribe, uh, we have a property in Norfolk, Nebraska that sits on a 49 acre, previously it was a college campus, Nebraska Christian College, who moved here uh, after that, after they sold that to us. And we've gone through this process uh, multiple times. And uh, our facility is not only for our tribal members, but we also open it up to the community in general. So for meeting space, uh, all those kinds of things. And so uh, our transportation facility is such that we provide transportation not only to 
tribal members and members of the native community, but also the public as a whole. So we see that as a personal service, much like, uh, I don't want to say like a cab company, but they can call up and we provide uh, those services to our members uh, for free. And so they can get rides to and from the facility itself, but also to the community in general. So uh, it's, it's another service that we're able to offer and, and help the community out. Um, there's um, just a, a wide ver variety of services that we provide here, not only the health side, but behavior health, social services, education, uh, housing, all of those aspects of, that go on here too. And uh, we're very stringent with uh, how we use this. We know that we're protecting it not only for the current users, but also our next generations. And uh, our tribe is not rich when you compare um, the price tag to this project. So it's something that uh, we feel very strongly about in protecting and, and maintaining a good relationship and making sure that this property is viable for us moving forward in the future. So uh, again, our community is very excited about this opportunity. Uh, we think with our public meeting that we held on October 23rd, uh, we had some good questions at that meeting, and I think we answered those very well. And uh, with that, I'd, I'd open up to any questions you may have. Congratulations on this project. I think it's fantastic. Um, where the, that's a 156,000 square foot building. I'm trying to understand where people park for that facility. Well, as you can see on the map, um, there's this large parking area here, and um, this one to the, I guess it's to the south, south there. Um, that one's a little further away, but it's still accessible. But we believe the majority of our people will, will use this, this parking here. Many of our people that use public transportation, not only what we provide, but busing, those kinds of things, will have access in this area up here. And that will be primarily for our elders, uh, handicap parking, and those kinds of things. And so even when they're parking away in these different areas, our plan is to, especially with this lot, because it's such an elevation change, we're going to have elders that uh, can't walk up the stairs that are there. And so we'll have a little shuttle that runs them back and forth to accommodate for that. And because we are in a clinic, and I know I'm not the healthiest individual in the world, but uh, we are there for uh, be proactive. And so it'll be a little exercise going back and forth. Have you uh, have you had conversations with the Bellevue Cabinets uh, owner uh, as well? I mean, he's kind of an island in the middle of all your property there. Just wondering what kind of conversations you've had. We have. In Brent Beller, 1140 West Center Road. I actually spoke to them yesterday. Um, and admittedly, so we, when we did our neighborhood search, we did a search. And the searcher actually searched up to 50, 5701 85th Street in 300-foot radius. And, and that left out the um, herb growth and so yesterday I actually called them told them what we're doing sent them a site plan uh, tried to answer any questions and, I, and, and maybe he's here um, and I actually I actually talked to his son as well who was actually operating the business and, and same deal explain what we're doing um, more than anything just to answer questions and be a potential future neighbor good neighbor okay. anyone else speak in favor of this project any opposition to the project hearing none no, no, got no, we have one we have an opposition okay uh, I'm Herb Grothy uh, uh, 13207 Polk Street live at I'm the owner of Bellevue Cab Bellevue Cabinets, the facilities at uh, uh, 5815 South 86th Circle. Um, I've been in business for 1964. Uh, my father has been in business, uh, construction business, and I have turned the business over to my son and daughter-in-law. Um, less than a week ago, I got a letter thanks to the city, uh, stating me to be down here for uh, the meeting, and uh, I was not notified by anybody, quite a shock, and um, too late to get legal counsel, so I'm here trying to make the best of it. 
Um, when I started, um, in 24, less than 24 hours, they contacted me. They wanted to know what I was going to, if I was for it, against it, complain against it. What, are, what my, I told them what the, my concerns were and stuff like this. I was told about this meeting by the mail lady uh, last Monday. Uh, there's a meeting, there was a meeting held, I guess, a couple weeks earlier. I never got invited. I don't know if it's intentional or what, but I'm right in the prime spot of the whole thing, just right in the middle of the whole shot. Nobody's ever said anything to me about it, so we're, you want to call us snowbirds, we're snowbirds from Florida, we're ready to go, and now we're here working on this. Uh, I'd like to know who was invited to this meeting. He says everybody within 300 feet of the proposed property. That contains a lot of places. That it contains, you know, the schools, the apartments, the shopping centers, other businesses, even on our side of the railroad tracks. You know, it's the city of the city of Ralston. Uh, I asked him what the permit and stuff was going to be used for, and he stated. Uh, Administration offices, health offices, and community gatherings, transportation centers, sweat lodge, sweat lodge. Okay, well, other activities, other activities. What does that mean? Other activities. In your in your letter, you guys sent me. It says any other um, sweat lodge, any other various activities. What does various activities mean? Gambling, you know, the drinking, or what is what goes on there? You know, nobody's ever ex explained anything this stuff to me. I called Mike Carter. He didn't know. He knew about the meeting, but he couldn't answer any of my questions. Just told me, I said, well, is it a community gathering place? Is it, is it people hanging out or what's going on here? You know, and there's extra lots and stuff like that. I used to own the property. I owned all that stuff in the bottom. I sold out to American Business List on a, on a vacant lot because the city denied me building a building. Uh, I wanted a cold storage warehouse there. They says, no, I gotta have like a real building. I gotta have it like a my own electrical, own water, own sewer, and all that kind of stuff. I just wanted a cold storage. So it wasn't doing me much good to have another complete business going. So I sold the property. Uh, anyway, I'd like to know if anybody's gonna be staying there overnight, sleeping there, camping, living, stuff like that. Uh, any quarters or anything like this, um, a sweat lodge, what is it? They want to put that right next door to my building. Uh, you look at up on the internet sometime, look what a sweat lodge is, just what it is. It's just basically a hut, throwing a bunch of blankets over the top of it, they build a fire outside, they put a, the rocks in the fire and they bring them inside, they throw water on them, they sweat. And you're supposed to go jump in the river or the stream or something like that, cool off, do it again, or whatever. This is all on the internet. But anyway, I'm going to put that right next door to my building. Um, I have so many parking places needed at the sweat lodge, you know, around in that area. All that. They're going to put a 3,500 square foot building up to, I don't know if that contains bathrooms or what, what that contains of. Seems like to me this stuff here would be better off to this pond they're talking about putting down the lower level or something like that where it's not next to a building uh, uh, man this is customers coming and going uh is this Ponca tribe i know nothing about them are they a non-profit organization is this something is this all this property is going to be taken off the tax roll is it uh somebody else is going to be making up the difference on it how many people are going to be working in the building i guess you guys Kind of went over that. Uh, truck traffic, we've always had a problem with truck traffic coming back and forth in there. It's a busy place. Our neighbors next door, they're tremendously busy. There's trucks coming in and going all the time. We have a lot of problems before when American business was lives there, and they use it for a parking lot. People are walking across the streets. There's not really sidewalks you can put in on a cul-de-sac like that. Uh, you look at my property in the front or frontage of it. There's a very little frontage of it. It opens up tremendous big in the back. Um, so you're going to come down the street, and I don't have a, a uh, yeah, I do too, a picture of it here. But you guys can see that uh, 
this little area here is just going to be my little front coming into it. All the rest of this stuff, I mean, it's going to be just almost like a driveway coming in uh, to an area. The customers ain't going to like that. You're right next door to it is all the, the football fields. You know, there's the people from, from Miller, they, you can sit there and look at all this stuff. I mean, anyway, this is the runoff of the water. Where does all this water come from? Now, we have a problem already, water coming down the street, running right down here. It goes in our property. We've just re real heavy rain. Uh, things like this I'm just, I'm worried about. The other day, the, uh, we drove down to 26 and J, whatever the address is there, to see what the kind of pro what they do. You all are all drive by that place and see what it looks like. I just don't not take care of it. It's run down. Uh, we don't need that out there. I'm just telling you, we just don't need it. Um, anyway, here's that's my story, and I'm opposed to it. So. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else in opposition to the project? Hello, my name is Gary Grothy. I uh, am the uh, 11836 Washington Plaza is my home address, but I am the uh, owner of Bellevue Cabinets. Um, the, my father, you just heard from, has uh, the landowner, but I'm not the one that actually runs the, the business out of the, the area that we're talking about. Uh, not to reiterate on the same thing, but uh, one of the biggest concerns we have is, uh, as a business is um, the, uh, obviously the fire um, with the, with the uh, sweat lodge that we are, that was proposed on the plan that we looked at. And um, also, um, uh, with what's going to be happening as far as their hours of operation, uh, whether if, um, you know, that we uh, make noise and, you know, if we have a special use uh, that's brought into here and we're doing other activities, if that's going to affect um, me being able to make noise at certain times of the day. Generally, right now, we work with, uh, from 7 to 5.30, Monday through Friday, and then partially on Saturday. So... If uh, there's some other activities, the various activities is what I'd be interested in finding out what is going to happen so that we're not, uh, we can get along as a neighbor and uh, be able to uh, not have issues as far as uh, noise ordinance or things like that. Of course, um, you know, the traffic that was mentioned uh, earlier with uh, Info USA when they were doing business years ago, there was quite a large problem with traffic. And that's why some of these properties were purchased, because uh, they had so much building and not enough parking. Uh, again, like was said earlier, was we have a lot of truck traffic, not only just us, uh, the business to the other, uh, to the west of them, to the large building. Uh, we've had issues before where fire trucks wouldn't be able to make turns in, in there because of parking. That was they. Uh, they've corrected some of that problem with some of the additional parking spots. But as they were talking earlier about the difference in elevation is quite a difference uh, in elevation. And connecting those two areas there is going to be pretty substantial in order to get that parking on that end. And I'm afraid that you're going to have a lot of extra parking on 86 Circle themselves and then having that being um, pretty congested in there. Um, you know, the, I guess I'd like to know what um, their, what all is the plan for their hours of use as well. Um, that's kind of where I'm opposed of the, the of it myself, and uh, that's kind of where I stand. Thank you. Is there anyone else speaking in opposition? My name's Jason Buckingham for Ralston Public Schools, 8545 Park Drive, and I, I don't know if this is appropriate. I'm not speaking in opposition. Um, unfortunately, I was unable to attend the informational meeting, and I just had a few questions. I wonder if they would add, answer for us as well. Um, some of the questions I have, we're excited about the opportunity of having a new tenant in and working with us for some community resources. Um, the concerns that we have is from a safety perspective. The property does abut next to our, our high school and our, our field. 
uh, as we talk about health services that are provided, I wonder if uh, Mr. Wright would indulge me and comment, are we looking at mental health services, chemical dependency, what other types of services would be provided um, through the Ponca tribe? And again, just to clarify, I'm not testifying in opposition, just asking a few questions here. Um, I think it'd probably be fair to classify this as being neutral. Okay. Thank you. Anyone else in opposition? I'm going to ask Mr. Wright or, or his representative to come back to the podium and uh, uh, perhaps um, give us some overview on the operations of the center and answer some of the questions that were, were raised. Sure. Brent Beller, 114 for West Center Road. I might take a couple of the more entitlement issues and then maybe the sweat lodge and the services. Mm -hmm. I'll defer to Chairman Wright. Um, so there's there's no residential aspect going on here. This is this is medical health clinic services being provided offices. Um, the parking at this side, I, we're actually reducing parking. So I think it used to be a upper 600, 600, 670 parking spaces. We're reducing it down to 522. Um, I don't think anyone on our side would object to having less parking spaces. It's more a city requirement, obviously, that the amount of square footage that is on the site, we have to maintain a certain ratio per city standards. Um, one piece of information I didn't mention, and to answer another question, was storm runoff. So as part of this project, um, we obviously will comply with the city, city's stormwater prevention plan, and we actually incorporated a, a stormwater retention pond over here on the east side of the, of the project. So again, being mindful of the fact there is a lot of concrete, uh, that plan is already in place. Any, any storm runoff, water runoff uh, will certainly not uh, pool at um, Mr. Gross' property. The, the idea is to have that drain with the elevation uh, to, to the east. Um, and then with respect to the sweat lodge and, and the services, I'll, I'll defer to Chairman Wright. Yeah. Oh, yeah. In, in regards to... Um, Would you name and address again, please? I'm sorry. Larry Wright, Jr., Chairman of Ponca Tribe, 2602 J Street. Uh, in regards to the gaming question, uh, that would be no. Uh, there's a whole federal process that go, is required. There's a whole state process that's required. Uh, that would require putting the land in the trust, which uh, is a several year process. And uh, those that are familiar with that process know knows that it's very cumbersome. And uh, I would be willing to, no pun intended, bet that that would not be allowed in this location. So that that's not an issue. And I'm not trying to be flipping about that, but uh, that's not an issue for us. But I also know that that's always one of the first questions that's asked when the tribe buys any property. Uh, there will not be any alcohol on this property. Um, we're there to provide services, health care services, and uh, the sweat lodge that's in question is part of that. Uh, the sweat lodge for, for us is like going to church. And so uh, we don't, if, if you don't expect that at church, it's not going to happen at our church either. Um, and so when we, uh, when we talk about sweat lodge, the internet can be many things and it's not always complete and there's a lot of different variations. This is a picture that's taken of a sweat lodge, it's not ours, but gives you an idea of what it entails. We've been currently using a sweat lodge at our facility that we have now for over 20 years. And with this, we have a permit with the fire department, the Omaha fire department and there's, they have certain requirements. And in those 20 years, the only issue we've ever had is somebody else coming in and vandalizing it. And that happened here recently. So there's never been an issue as far as fire or those kinds of things. I'm also not here to say that can never happen. I'm not that uh, um, dismissive of that issue, but it's something that's taken care of uh, and, and considered for us when this is done, it's sacred and it's, it's uh, somebody is on site monitoring this from the time they start it to the time all the coals are out. And so, again, this is a, a sacred ceremony for us. It's also part of the holistic uh, medicine that we provide in our clinic to our people. To answer the other question uh, before, uh, as far as what other services, we don't have, um, we, we won't have 
drug or alcohol dependency uh, services on site. Uh, those issues uh, are, are beyond our scope of work. There's no residential aspect to the care that we provide. And so most of our things, when it comes to behavioral health, uh, it's, it's uh, those that may have had issues and we're providing that mental health service on that, counseling, uh, those kinds of services. Um, those kind of issues that become more than what we can handle within our clinic, you know, within the scope of our services, we refer out to other agencies that have those uh, abilities and those are the partnerships that we look to create with those entities as well. So none of that is, is here on site. Um, as far as the, the, the traffic concerns, um, I understand on the cul-de-sac issue, and, and as it was stated here, uh, parking is not an issue for us. Uh, our people will be using the parking lot, and there's more parking there than what we need. Uh, the property itself uh, is, is, is larger than what we currently have capacity for, and so, but it's a good opportunity for us to look to grow into it. And um, as far as the hours um, uh, that these are usually held, when you talk about the sweat lodge itself, that's usually held at night. It's usually held uh, con consistently in our hours. We've kept them pretty pretty uh, consistent so people know when to, to expect that. And right now it's Friday nights at six o'clock is when it starts. And it could go for a couple hours. And when that's done, the building that's being proposed is that so that those that use that facility as part of our ceremony when they're done they give thanks and they provide a meal so they'll use that little building there to feed people can change they can shower uh, have that meal have that time with each other and then when they're done they leave and so the person that oversees that is considered a a, a, um, a medicine man or a sacred person and so they're in charge of all of that to make sure that there's no things being done that shouldn't be done. And if those things are reported, uh, we have no tolerance for that within the tribe. That's a sacred ceremony for us, and anybody that disrespects that is not allowed to come back. And so those are things that uh, we hold very, uh, um, we're, we're very stringent about. Uh, as far as um, what else was said here, other hours, after hours, uh, typically right now, the majority of events that happen after hours are for our elders program. They come in at night, they have elders gatherings, they do beadwork. We have youth groups that come in and are there for a couple hours at night. Usually everybody's gone by eight o'clock. Sometimes there's later gatherings, but not very often. Could you give me some insights on what other activities means? Well, that, that would be it, other activities. Um, where we might have youth program where they bring in the youth and they might have um, the sleepover at night. Uh, every year we hold a health fair uh, currently with our clinic, all the programs and services, we invite the community as a whole to come uh, in our location because we don't have capacity within the building, we take up the parking lot outside. In this facility, we would be able to do it all inside. So that would be an occasion of another activity. If the community itself wanted to hold a meeting, they could use this facility if they contacted us and wanted to do something like that. If a family had a gathering, a wedding, uh, graduation, birthday party, and they wanted to use the facility, they could do that. And so those would be the kinds of things. And typically we have a security guard on site now uh, at our current location because we do have a pharmacy involved and we follow all those uh, issues as well. So. Uh, it's never unguarded to, in our current property. We have security cameras all over that we uh, keep track of what's going on. And um, that would be the same at this location. Okay, two questions. Mm -hmm. um, Mr. Grothy was concerned that he didn't get a notice of the meeting. Um, that's, that's the first question. The second question was I I raised the issue of uh, not being quite Native American myself. One for me with the um, sweat, uh, you know, and um, raised a question about it and any potential noise issues um, surrounding that activity there. So, would you? I'll let you know the first one. Brent Beller, one one four four West Center Road. The the search issue was because of the the amount of 
addresses we had. Usually when we do the neighborhood searches, we pick an address, do a 300 foot search radius, get it certified by a title company or a search company. Um, in this instance, they used, an ad they used the address down on 85th Circle. When they did the 300 foot radius search, it just didn't pick up. They're 300 feet away. And, and admittedly, if it's on anyone, it's on me because I, I missed that, but it certainly wasn't purposeful. Um, and when I was alerted to the fact that, and I think it was, it was Mr. Carter who had contacted me and said, hey, there's somebody who was missing the search. I picked up the phone, called them immediately. Um, and and that's, that's what happened, unfortunately. And I think it's important for everyone to understand, Mr. Grothy, especially in your family, that today, since this is a special use permit they're looking for, that even if we um, recommend approval to the city council, there's still a lot of time between now and when the city council votes on that. So, so that would provide time for the groups to get together and talk about that stuff. And I don't think they would oppose. I mean, as much as, um, you know, the growthies re respect what they have going on, I, I think that area, the intent is to isolate that and, and segregate it from the other uses going on because it is a cultural service area and landscaping obviously is the best thing. So, I mean, to your point, I think working with them to ensure that they're comfortable with the amount of privacy you they want. You guys need some new cabinets. <laughs> What's that? I'm sorry. You might need some new cabinets for your we, facility. We might. <laughs> we might. Can okay. I ask you uh, what what are your hours though? Not the after hours things. What are what are your hours? And then with the pharmacy involved, do you uh, is the pharmacy open all night uh, for? Okay. So, it, our typical hours are eight to five. Right now we have some flex hours. So because we want to try and accommodate people's schedules too. So not everybody can get in eight to five. So we, we've looked at some after hours where we provide some services from five until seven, maybe eight, uh, some Saturday morning hours just to try and be flexible because it is a business too. And so on the, especially on our clinic side where we're trying to generate revenue for services that we provide not only to our people, but to the community in general as will be the case when we move here. So those are typically the hours that we have. So what about what about weekends? Uh, I know you have some special events, maybe, but are, is it is, it, is it, will the clinic be open on the weekends as well? Um, right now, it, uh, the easy, my default would be Saturday morning, because okay. that's currently a model that we, we have right now, and we're looking to see what's what's the most efficient time. So if we're going to have be open from eight to noon, let's say on Saturday, and we don't have the the traffic flow that would support that, we're not going to do that, obviously. So. Um, but right now, those are hours that we do keep. And obviously, with the expansion in size, we're going to be able to expand our programs and services to, to accommodate that. Um, but, you know, as far as all night long, no. Uh, we don't do that now, and we don't foresee that being the case here. Um, and, and as far as the other question to the, to the sweat lodge, uh, I will extend this as well. Anybody that has a concern about that, just shy of actually going through the process because again that's a whole different thing but i would welcome anybody that wants to to come down to our current location and we can sit on site and talk about that the only noise that you're going to hear from us is singing and you'll hear a drum and that's typically done inside the sweat lodge it's muffled and as much as other people may not want to hear it we don't want to hear you either because that, that, <laughs> that, that interferes with our sacred time Okay. And so when, when we talk about having a fence around this, it's, it's to protect the site, but it's also to say we're going to ask for the tallest fence that can be allowed so that you're not being bothered by us and we're not being bothered by you. And how many people on typical on Friday nights right now go through the sweat lodge ceremony? It, it varies. It really does, depending on uh, time of year. gets colder, population goes down. Uh, but it can be four, it could be 20. And so, again, when people come on site, they know that they're there for a sacred reason. Um, those that uh, are, are there because maybe it was prescribed to them as something to help them get through drug addiction or, or whatever it might be, you know, depression, those kinds of things. And so it's, it's a prescribed service in, in some instances. So at, with that being said, again, we have a sacred leader on site, and it really is probably uh, of, of everything this is probably the most protected thing that that we are of it and it's the one that's most exposed can you address uh can you address mr Grothy's uh concerns about he said he went down to your current location and was a little bit concerned about the maintenance and 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 now you're 
you're, you're going to have a pretty large campus right. here. So can you address that concern that he yeah, raised? Yeah, our, our current building is, is is not the Taj Mahal by any means, and it's it's an old facility. It's run down, uh, and we're at a point where putting more money into it is not economically feasible. And so I, I'll be the first to admit it doesn't look the best. And but that also saying that. Um, this facility here is what we what we expect, and so uh, it's not going to be run down. As was stated earlier, we're putting about twenty-five million dollars in renovation into this building: new windows, new roof. Uh, we're trying to stay out of LEED certification, but we very well may get into that aspect as well, uh, because that's a requirement of the clinic piece to that. There are certain uh, contingencies and, and requirements by Indian Health Service that we have to meet and maintain as a health clinic that we do already now, even though the building doesn't look very good. But that's also one of the reasons why we've been trying to move for 10 years. And this is the first property that's really been able to encompass everything that we do currently and be able to expand on that and, and provide better services to our people. And the grant that you've got with, is it the Indian Service? Indian Health Service. Indian Health Service. So does that, does that cover the, the maintenance uh, as well then going forward because a building of this size absolutely. every building has problems absolutely. right and, and absolutely. they always do and it yeah. covers it covers ongoing maintenance yeah. as well mm -hmm. so you're 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 certified by Indian Health then uh, to open and then continually like like state hospitals are they have to be correct inspected. we're actually have a different accreditation that we're working toward uh, and right now ours is really a tribally run facility there's a difference in being an actual Indian health facility versus a tribally run and operated one. And currently that's what we've been doing. And with this partnership with IHS, they're recognizing uh, what we've done in the past, the service that we provide. Uh, and currently, just to give you an idea of how we operate and how efficient we are, we get funded for about um, 3,000 people coming through our clinic. We currently see about 8,000. And so there's a lot of uh, people that wouldn't get services normally by not coming to our facility. And, and we take all cases, and we have a lot of charity care as well. And the expansion that this project would allow us to do with Indian Health Service will allow us to take better care of those people that use our facility and those that are looking for a place. Not saying the other places in town around the metro aren't adequate, but it's very different when natives come into a native-run facility and see those things that are specific to them that they may not see someplace else. Mr. Nesbitt, when these gentlemen are done, I'd like to invite the, the junior, Mr. Grothy, back up. Are you? Yeah, no, I'm, and I'm, I don't know if I missed a, a question. Um, if I did, it's just because I don't remember. Sorry. Okay, thank you. Mr. Grothy, junior. Gary Grothy, 11836 Washington Plaza. Um, when I was talking earlier about hours of operation, I was concerned about, will we have issues down the road with me running my dust collector and things like that for our, my noise, not so much uh, their noise. Um, the other thing that was I missed, I was trying to keep in line with time and be respectful of that, but with the Pictures shown with the fire. Um, obviously, I have a cabinet shop. Cabinet shop and fire don't work very well together. Um, the building next to the proposed site, uh, where they're talking about here, um, by uh, where the proposed lodge is, that would be at on the other side is a body shop. Um, to me, that's kind of a. Uh, this would be. A, our building is right, one of our buildings is right along this tree line right here, that their proposed tree line that they have here. And, the lot, and you can see the where this is gonna be concerned again with, with the fire, of course. Um, we've uh, uh, also, um, on, you had mentioned on Friday nights, uh, I believe that's when Ralston has their football games. You know, that'd be another concern I would have, not that that's my, any of my, my business, but, um, uh, a lot of times we have Saturday ap afternoon uh, customers coming in and going as well. So, um, you know, obviously I want to get along with our, our neighbors, but uh, these are the concerns that 
we have uh, the biggest one being the fire, I would say, and uh, the parking issue with the extra traffic. Now, I, I, no, go ahead. I haven't s seen or heard anything right now during this discussion that seems to be insurmountable, surmountable without, without some conversation, additional conversations going that would ease your concerns and ease their concerns and what have you. So I, I would strongly suggest that um, at the conclusion of these procedures, you guys, you got time between now and city council or whatever, and uh, sit down and have some further discussions, iron out any differences that you that you might have and do it the right way, sir. Um, I do have some concerns. Okay. Um, and a mistake was made. We always, as a planning board body, we always require that notification be made to the neighbors. And a mistake was made, but the growthies did not get that notification. And here we are, you know, 24 hours in advance. Here they are up here trying to figure out what's going on. Trenton made the comment that this is a special use permit and that it'll go on to the city council and there's more time, but it would go on with our recommendation to the city council. I'm not saying I'm against the project, but I, to be consistent, I have the concern that the growthies were not notified. And as you can see, there sits their building right in the middle of everything. And in fairness, um, I don't know, I guess I would ask Herb and G Gary if they were all right with moving. The, the board will do what they want to do. I'm for myself. Are you guys all right? with moving ahead and having the 30 days or, or more before it gets to the city council to talk to the applicant. Do we know how long it'll be, be I'm sorry, how long it'll be sh mm -hmm. Sherry before it would go to city council? It usually takes a minimum of six weeks before there's a public hearing okay. scheduled. So you have time, and again, if, let's say if, if we would go ahead and recommend our recommendation for approval, it's, it's only final after the city council accepts that recommendation. They vote for themselves. They could deny it or approval in six weeks, and that would give you time to do that. My, uh, my Could you, you got to come, come forward. My opinion will not change regardless if we have another 30 days or not. Uh, I am... I'm totally against this uh, uh, sweat lodge. Uh, the other part of the project, uh, is this thing gonna be a drug rehab type of a deal? We're gonna have uh, things like not. this, as a, said no. you know, no. uh, things I'd like to, to know more, a little more about it. I don't see why they can't go to a shopping center someplace or go out in the country. Even the Griffiths, you look on the internet of what a sweat lodge is, they wanna jump in a stream afterwards and get claimed and all that kind of stuff. There ain't no stream out there. Uh, why would they want to be in the country? Why do they want to bother a, an industrial park? I think we got one of the nicest industrial parks in the city of Omaha, right there. Herb, and, uh, Herb. I don't want to see it go downhill. But looking at the other place, he said it's run down. Why is it run down? It's not kept up. And, I, and this is the environment I want. I don't want this type of environment, guys. This is this is my opinion. Another 30 days is not going to change my mind. Um, would you agree to meet with them? Pardon? Would you be so kind to meet with, with them? Sure, definitely. But the attorney called me less than 24 hours ago. We understand that. You know what I'm saying? We know that. I mean, I just, I can't believe somebody, it's, I'm in the prime spot of the whole place. You know, why wouldn't they be the first one, I'd be the first one to contact. You know, when I guess did, I'm saying. We, we know that. When did you get a letter from the city? I got a letter from the city a week ago, you guys. That's what I say. A week so ago. The city. The uh, it was less than a week ago. It was on a Wednesday night when I got it. And uh, I haven't had time to get counsel. Are we confusing the difference between the notification and the and the? I'll clarify. The, 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 oh, oh, that, let's, let's Sherry clarify. Let's Sherry. Um, <laughs> the, we send out notices to property owners within 300 feet. When we meet with the applicants at pre-app meetings ahead of their submitting a formal request, we recommend that they reach out to property owners in the area as well. So our notification went out a week. They received it a week ago. Mr. Beller has indicated that they sent out notification, but because of the address search, this property had not been included in that. So there was formal legal notification sent out by the city. In a timely manner? Correct. 
Okay, so that answers but your question. No, that doesn't answer my question. My question is, or my concern was that the entire board, for years, we've required the applicant to meet with the owners of property within 300 feet. That didn't take place this time. That's my concern. I, I, the notification from the city was done properly. The, 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 the meeting with the applicant was a mistake, but that was improper. Right. I understand that what you're saying, and, and mm -hmm. I think that's a valid point. I also think, though, that there's going to be six weeks before, and, you know, in, for, from a convert commercial real estate, putting on my hat as a commercial real estate professional developer, I'm amazed that, that this property found a tenant. I mean, it's, you know, to, to, to have this tenant, I mean, and they were built for the neighborhood, number one, when they built this property, and, and for for the tribe to find this and have it fit so perfectly, it, it, it's a great reuse of this. And, and yeah, there, there's never the perfect thing for the neighbors. There's never, you know, there's always going to be concerns. And, and just like any good neighbors, you know, I, I think that if you guys get together and break bread or whatever you break and, and talk about your concerns, there's fire codes, they address the sweat lodge at their other location. Um, it doesn't sound like it's an all-night rage party or something like that. Um, you know, it's 20 people or less, it seems like. And, and you know, you, you got to work together. And, and, yeah, you've been there a long time. And I understand um, there's industrial uses around there as, as well. So um, I, I will support this and, and vote in favor of, of a favorable recommendation. But, but I, I do want there to be formal meetings with, between the groups and then, you know, talk to the city council about it. And, and this isn't a done deal by any means today because, you know, you guys can still lobby the, the city council and and um, talk to the planning department and everything else and, and see if you can come to some conclusions. And then, uh, you know, now is the time to get together and, and do that. And as you said, that, that delaying this vote in another 30 days isn't going to may or may not change your opinion, but I think six weeks is enough time um, to, to try to get some concessions or try to get what you, uh, that'll make you at least more comfortable, if not all the way comfortable, um, on this process. Okay, I think we have beaten this dead horse to death. <laughs> so, uh, are there any other... I got Thank another... Excuse me, I have another comment to make here. Who was invited to this meeting that was two weeks ago? How do we know he has a uh, what the 300-foot circle is? Who points the 300-foot circle around the outside premises of it? I mean, I guess, I'm again, I was in the middle of it there. This, this pertains to a lot of people, not just, I mean, a lot of businesses. And I'm the only business up here that's in an industrial park that is with anybody else notified. You know what I'm saying? How do I... How do we know that there was there was other, there wasn't neglect or maybe they didn't want to invite everybody at this I, at this gathering or whatever it was? I, I, I hear your concerns. Uh, I hear Mr. Rosenbaum's concern. I you know I would be the first person, maybe the second, jumping all over these guys if I really felt that they consciously attempted to avoid talking to you. I don't feel that way, and I've been on this board a long time and I've jumped on people like you wouldn't believe for doing what you think they did okay I just I don't see that happening has happened here and uh, and uh, I, I think there's a willingness on their part to continue conversations with you and, and I think you should be open to having some conversations with them okay well, but uh, he has a list of the people that they that they that they contacted well it's no word, I guess but I have uh, interest in a place in Florida. I'm required to be down there. It's supposed to be going down. I like to get this thing resolved and get it behind us too. I mean, I don't want to keep kicking a bucket down the road. road. But you, do you have a list? I asked yeah. you for a list yesterday yeah. about on the phone. So Brent Beller, 1144 West Center Road. Here's the, the certified list that we obtained. Again, from a title company? From a title company. I mean, you, you can see hmm? 5701, that's the address they searched. Oh, shit. Um, and you can see a 300 foot radius. And then Second page, these are all the folks that we sent notices to. I'm happy to submit this to the board. I'm happy to give you a copy, send you a copy. 
there, there's no hiding the ball going on here. How many at of the, all. How many of the, the uh, businesses uh, showed up or individuals showed oh, up? Oh, I, I think we had five folks five show total up. Of all the ones that were notified. Yeah, including the, the neighbor just to your west, the auto repair. He does not definitely want it either. I can't believe Andy doesn't, isn't here uh, doing this deal. But, uh, <coughs> okay. Thank you. Public hearing on this item is closed. Mrs. Rockwell. Rockwell. The first thing I'd like to note is that this is a special use permit. Um, it is, if approved by the city council, subject to the site plan, the operating statement, the conditions of approval. If for some reason those are not adhered to in the future, the, the planning department, the planning board, the city council has a right to re-review the request and make further recommendations. Um, and with regard to the operating statement, I'd like to ask uh, that the applicant uh, uh, amend the operating statement to include some of the information that was presented today and make it more complete, which would um, amend condition number five under the recommendation. Um, compliance with zoning includes um, performance standards, which uh, talk about noise, odor, flare, of course, since the property is zoned industrial as well as the adjacent properties, those standards are, are probably the least restrictive in the city, but they still have standards to comply with. Uh, and with that, I'm going to recommend on behalf of the department approval of the large project special use permit subject to the 11 conditions listed with condition number five being amended to include a revised expanded operating statement prior to forwarding on to city council. I have a motion. I recommend approval of the large uh, project uh, special use permit from GI district subject to the lemon uh, conditions of the staff report. Second. We have a motion and a second. Can I have a roll call for the vote, please? Brandon? Yes. Rosacker? Yes. Moore? Yes. Hayes? Yes. Collins? Yes. I'm going to vote no, not because I'm against the project, but just for consistency. I, I think we took away some of maybe the negotiating or compromising power of, of uh, the growthies. So I'm going to vote no on that. Mr. Chair? Yes. Approved. Thank you. Uh, our next.